Hey there friends! So I'm back at this thing I tried to do years ago. Years ago I tried to have an ASMR channel and my name used to be Aurora Raven. I made like 30 videos and gained up to 242 subscribers with my best videos gaining me 8.8k views and all it was was scare it to your eyes. It's just so, this is funny laughing back at myself now and whispering softly. <laughs> My first video uploaded when I was just a senior in high school and I popped off because all it was <laughs> was me showing off my drawings from high school and being like really into, like I got super intensely hyped over um, pretty much my chat feed getting filled up at the time but not really getting filled up because like it was just a thousand viewers right and I think I'm a little hard on myself always saying that but at that time because I was in school it felt like such a major accomplishment <laughs> at the time and I had a lot of accomplishments too but like having 8.8k views having a thousand views and then getting to 8.8 thousand views was a trip out of itself and I only made 30 of them and that was like about halfway through all of my ASMR videos at the time. So I was kind of living up in this fantasy that I could maybe possibly be like Jenna Marbles one day and create funny ass videos that were pretty much like comedy sketches or her just ranting about whatever the hell she wanted. And lo and behold, she got super famous off of it and she was able to make a career off of it and I don't know I guess at that time I thought of myself as a little gremlin in real life I loved her humor I loved her humor so much and she was just so captivating from like how she would tell a story like she was just telling a story time and it was the funniest story time ever and I think that's when like I first fell in love with comedy like at such a young age and I think that's why I looked for a comedian husband, honestly, my whole life. Because I always thought I was funny, but I always felt like someone needed to be more funnier than me because I just wasn't that impressed by other people's like ways of joking, considering the fact that I was picked on a lot. So it was really, really, really hard for me to believe that a thousand people watched my video, let alone eight thousand people watched my video. And it was just views, it wasn't really like a great like to... Um, dislike ratio and they have the thumbs down button and you can like see the votes of like the thumbs down and thumbs up button next to each other um i remember that that was being a thing and that was one of my next goals and then i just fucking totally did not stick with that goal at all which is okay um i was pretty self-conscious a lot of the time when i first started my asmr channel and i kept getting nervous and I just was not in a very good place literally in any in any realm of my smart like the reality I was living in at that time was not suited for somebody like me who <laughs> wants to create and needs to be in an envi a good environment to keep like creating it you know what I mean um in lots of my videos which is what I actually write here I mean since it's been 10 years since I uploaded my very first video on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> that, um, God, this was supposed to be an ASMR video, or at least low talking, and it's not like that at all. <laughs> Anyways, um, when I was making those videos, the room kept getting more and more uncluttered, and I didn't realize also that your environment is a reflection of like your mental health too <laughs> like your mind is the reality that you project right so since I was always stressed out from school since I was always you know had all these pressures that I was putting on myself um, and the pressures I found myself in uh, I found myself wanting to create less and less in my own bedroom at night which is where all of my ASMR videos were taken but you can see my bedroom get like organized and then start getting completely disorganized because my mind was scattered a lot of the time and I wish it wasn't so scattered. To be fair, I was just starting out right. I didn't get to know my mind or my spirit or myself very much 
myself get, getting, kept getting crushed under the weight of social pressures and the fear of being made fun of all the time. So eventually, I just stopped making ASMR videos. And then I kept trying to pick it up back up throughout college. In fact, you can see in the background of my videos for my ASMR channel, you can see me go from like my childhood bedroom to my college bedroom, back to my childhood bedroom, to my ex's place, back home to my childhood bedroom, to this new back bedroom and background here today. And I'm so proud to show it off finally that I'm going to get to be posting to my ASMR channel. But, like, as an adult now, like, a good adult, like, a very stable adult. So, my last video from my ASMR channel was years ago. So, it was during the pandemic that I made my last video. And it was also around the time I got with my boyfriend. And I started doing videos. At least I tried doing videos again with him. Went to go to a candy shop in like San Antonio. That was one of our first dates, I think it was. And on that date, I got these Japanese candy thingies, and which was the pop and cooking ones. And I ended up making an ASMR video out of it. And I even tried to keep up with doing makeup videos because I kept trying to make the makeup video thing happen. And uh, yeah, <laughs> seven minutes in. The point being is that the, I'm back at this now, and this is my little invitation to my old followers from my old ASMR channel to uh, come and join me here because I am going to try and bring that back. <laughs> For what? I'm laughing. I'm so sorry. I feel so silly doing this. <laughs> Even though this is what I've been trying to prepare for, right? I've been trying to prepare for this, like, to get ready to talk to in front of y'all. Because, uh, one thing I liked about- Okay, so I really idolized Jenna Marbles, and I also idolized Bailey Sarian and what they do here, because they're able to take two extremes of this and, like, just did something badass with it. Please. Okay. I fell off somewhere. Oh yeah, so you can see in the background of my all of my old ASMR videos, you can see my video, my backgrounds just change, and now we're here, and now I'm finally ready to, I guess, not ready, but I'm ready to come back in a more naturally flowy, authentic way. Not only back to my ASMR channel, which is where my true authenticity came out before it was like shattered under social pressures and whatnot, and um... <laughs> Same with the makeup channel. Oh, I really like Bailey Saren because she would just captivate you while being on camera, being herself, like putting on makeup, as did Jenna Marbles did. But Jenna Marbles went a more comedic route, and she like kept going with the comedic route. And I thought that that was maybe possibly something for myself in the future. So yeah. Um, and I still feel it. And I, but I just feel like now that I get a, ch a second chance at restarting this, or more so a third chance, because now I got three channels. I got my Cha Cha makeup, I got Cha Cha and Pole, and then I've also got Cha Cha and Tarot. So I got like all these three different. Um, wait, no, ASMR makeup Tarot. There we go. ASMR makeup and Tarot are the three channels that I have on like YouTube. Although the ASMR one came first, I would like to revive that and I'd like to have all of them come here because I can make just regular schmegular ASMR content for them and I have the subscribers that will at least appreciate it, you know what I mean? Now a little older and wiser, I find myself in the perfect place to rekindle this love for y'all. If you're willing to get to know me again, because from the get-go and my very first video, I had no reason to not show my true authentic self with you. So lately, I've been doing tarot readings over on Twitch, and I have been wanting to curate a more relaxing vibe for my viewers. Alright, so what I was going at is that I wanted to keep creating content at that time but yeah every time that I was going through life and as you can see through my background I just kept trying I at least kept trying to show up and make these ASMR videos that 
were getting less and less views, but I kept saying, like, it's okay, I'm going to keep making content. I'm going to find a way to keep making content. And then at some point, I just lost it, and I just never, ever got back to it. And I really feel like I kept trying to make changes. I kept wanting to... First, I was trying to do the ASMR channel, and because I didn't have the money to, like, make the production, the great production value that I wanted, I just gave up on it, and I wanted, like, good binaural mics. What I kept thinking was that I needed to invest something financially when I could have been investing in something knowledge-wise. Like, I could have gotten the cheapest mic at all and just screwed with the filters like I'm learning to do here on, I've been learning to do here on Twitch to make my stream, you know, the sound sound, like, really fucking crisp, you know? And then I got into the makeup stuff, but I, it was the same thing. It was just like, my background was like always messy and it kept reflecting like my mental health. You know what I mean? I wanted to invest money into good shit, but I just didn't have the con, I didn't have the confidence of just making art without like feeling self-conscious about like how much people notice, how much money I'm putting into something. You know what I mean? But I look back on all of my, not all of my old ASMR videos, but some of them, and they're so cozy, like, man, they're perfect, they're perfect ASMR videos for the vibe that I look for in ASMR videos, like, I want to feel like, out of, my favorite ASMR videos are the ones that make me feel like I was laying in my mom's lap and falling asleep as she was, like, you know, the low lighting of the lamp and, like, my parents' bedroom. It's a whole painting I want to do, but, like, look back on them and I find some nostalgia in them when I was really, really hating myself for the value of the content I was putting out. And I wish I was just a lot more kinder to myself at that time, which is what I've had to learn growing up through tarot, actually. Through tarot and working this new job and putting discipline in myself to make my own dreams happen tarot has helped me discover the art or not the art but the religious philosophy of alchemy which is pretty much like there the the concept of the alchemist is that they can turn silver into gold and people took it very fucking seriously they also were like the alchemists were also people who like seriously believed in science because of their ability to like do that turn silver into gold in like a physical sense but also what alchemists do what scientists do is they don't let a problem ever fucking stop them they their mind keeps going at a rate to like find solutions to every single thing that they find themselves in they don't ever let themselves get stuck in like oh fuck like this fucking sorry for cussing but this fucking shitty bad thing happened to me like people what i realized i was doing at that time was i was really allowing negative thoughts to seriously get to me in just the fucking strangest way possible like whether it was about my body whether it was about the art i was making whether it was about the music that i liked i was always a prisoner of my own limiting self-belief mind and it wasn't until I found tarot, I discovered uh, spirituality in like a completely different sense and then having a whole new revamping of it. Um, I, I constantly had these evolved uh, new fucking ideas of what religion or philosophy is and I didn't realize how one track minded I was until, I don't know, just trying to get back at this and try and make this art that I've been wanting to create and show off and share of myself for a long time, but I've only ever, only ever been like so scared to put myself out. And just lately, I don't know, I guess the reflecting back to my ASMR videos, cause I, I cannot believe I went back to go and see those ASMR videos because goodness gracious, I cringe at the thought of myself of like, having to go back and edit my videos <laughs> like at all and I and I don't I don't really get it at all <laughs> but um reflection helps with growth like so so much and again I keep going back and digressing but this is what tarot has helped me with so much it has helped me it has helped calm me because I've always been a person that has been like a 
nervous in social situations just because of my history of being bullied so much growing up and not reading people and not reading situations and overthinking situations but goodness when you look for the positive energy in anything when you're looking for the positive message um tarot can really really be so beneficial in helping you even if the message isn't that great like if a tarot reader is reading for uh a querent is what they're called then lots of the times the person the querent is asking if if something's gonna if a person that i don't even have permission on reading for is going to call them or something then um i'm going to do my best to make sure that the attention is not focused on that because outside of ourselves we can't control anything that happens outside of ourselves there are realms of reality that we can control and the only things we can control is how much action we put into something our emotions that we feel in a moment our thoughts or our words that we are going to communicate before we do and how we keep our clean home how we keep our home clean and maintained and balanced and harmony in all areas of the life and our health and how much money we're bringing in those elements right there those four elements that i was talking about are literally the out are literally the symbols of earth wind water and fire and that is Focusing attention back on that, focusing attention back on uh, what you can control rather, rather than what you can't control, like if somebody's going to call you or not, that doesn't really matter. I personally would rather use the cards to see what I need to work on to attract the call that I need to get or that I want to get from anybody at all, from the attention that I want. So, yeah, th that is my thoughts and philosophy on tarot. And, um, I don't know. I've always had trouble in, uh, understanding social situations, emotional situations, what I should act on or not. And, um, Tara has definitely, definitely helped me with that because it helps me take a step back from myself and go, am I getting upset am, am i getting emotional of this because it triggers uh my ego it, it challenges my ego it makes me think twice about this limiting belief i have on this subject so yeah and i here on this channel i don't just plan to stream just tarot i also do plan on streaming and this is what this is what is going to shock the ASMR followers is that <laughs> I will be because they've, they've known me since I was like in high school and since I was just starting college and then they're gonna find out that I'm pole dancing and just like my family they're all gonna have questions well you know what I'll answer that question and I'll go ahead and answer that question here because I went from being a bartender to being a dental assistant and now to dancing in cabarets and it's such a huge difference and i am so, i am literally a very 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 different person than i was like six eight nine ten years ago since i was like 17 or 18 and um i love all of it i even like my social media marketing job that i had for a little bit but uh i really 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 love what I do now because what I do now is just so fun and it's so fulfilling in more ways and it has been a learning experience and everybody's you know at least I know my family is gonna wonder like how like why how and I'll tell you what I feel like I could talk about this now but since I am gonna talk about it I know it's gonna ruffle a feather or two I, I don't really care because it needs to be talked about um, this fucking wild thing that I went through yeah so how I found my cabaret how, my, how I found my cabaret that I worked in was that I was working as a bartender I went back to bartending during COVID and I went to this bar that was looking for a bartender 
and um, I knew it was just a simple bottle popping job. You know what I mean? I knew it was just a simple liquor pouring, bottle popping job. I, I worked many of those many times. I had been out of bar, I had been out of being a dental assistant for like a year because of COVID and my marketing job, which was actually before, after that, before that. Um, I, <laughs> I went to go bartend at this bar that already didn't have a very good reputation for being clean. You know what I mean? It was just one of those dive bars. And, um, it was most, it was very well known. It was, it was well known in, our, in the town that it was in. And I remember that place being the first bar I ever tried. One of my favorite shots was, which is the Starfucker shot. And, um, I worked there for three days, and out of those three days, I was left by myself to close a place that took, like, an hour or two to do, and I just wasn't making the tips for it in those, like, two days, and my dad didn't like how I was being left there. I think I was, yeah, I was with my boyfriend at the time. He would call me to make sure that I wasn't being left alone at night, which, I mean, I was, and then the owner would hop on over from his place and close the bar up, but he couldn't, like, stay with me. It just wasn't safe. I didn't feel safe. The money wasn't that great. It just wasn't worth it. Well, the last day that I was there, and the day that I quit, I quit because the owner was dating one of the bartenders, and she showed up to work either drunk or she was on some something. She was on some. She she smoked something that wasn't, you know, Mary Jane, I'll tell you that much. And, um... I saw the owner, I, I walked into the back with my manager, manager not being the owner, I walked to the back with my manager, and he was beating the crap out of her, <laughs> he was beating the crap out of her, and I, I saw what I saw, and I was like, kind of not phased by it at first, because I was like, well, I'm definitely gonna quit this job today, that's for sure. And I saw him grab her by her hair and drag her to his truck and, like, totally freaking, you know, like, drag her off to, I don't know where, I don't know where he dragged her off to, but I worried about her. And, um, the manager could tell that I was, like, shocked, I mean, it was just a shocking thing to witness overall, and, um... I went, I went inside, and there, there were these people that saw, there were people at the table that saw him do that, and one of them was a lady who went to high school with my mom, and this lady uh, came in kind of frantic, I guess she thought I was going to call the cops, which I should have in retrospect, but I, I never witnessed somebody, a man, physically harm a woman like that physically harm his girlfriend employee in front of a group of people he was sitting in the back patio with like a group of people and fucking this lady just ran in like trying to make sure that i was okay and she was like really making an excuse for this guy very much making an excuse for this guy and that upset me like way more in that moment <laughs> than um that what what that was literally <laughs> so it's it's i and luckily the bar shut down and um yeah the bar is no longer open i don't know what happened to that dude i never even got my paycheck for those three days of work and that's okay i'm not even upset I didn't even get a freaking W-2 for the work that I did or didn't do. <laughs> yeah. So, from there, I met, I met, the manager of that shop, of that bar, was upset about everything about that. She felt so bad. She felt so, so terribly bad. She was like, I don't, I don't blame you if you want to quit. I don't blame you if you want to go home. I was like, oh, 
you don't and she was like no and then she pointed me to the cabaret that i started working at and at that cabaret she told me you one night bartending here you won't like you won't i don't think you'll work anywhere else she was telling me that her niece was working there and sure enough i met her niece there her niece was not a server <laughs> her niece was definitely a, da a dancer but it was just it blew my mind everything everything about working there just kind of blew my mind on what um preconceived notions or thoughts or beliefs i had about that type of work or that type of um environment i got a crash course in all of that sw stuff but also by that i mean like I got to be more understanding and empathetic of women and I found a group of women that because I didn't like having girlfriends I didn't even really like being in my feminine energy until I started that job at that cabaret and there's so many differences I realize now because I thought it was all one blanket term of like script club you know what I mean but it's not like that at all. I mean, there's cabarets where women are more free to, like, put on a showmanship, you know, have showmanship with, with whatever they dance to. It seems to be more open to, like, all walks of life, all cultures. You're more often to, I don't know, I feel like you're more often to hear uh, country music in a club like that, but I feel like it could be any club. And then, so there's cabarets, right? And then there is the Gentleman's Club, which is definitely more of like a party, kind of what you see in, in movies, types of clubs. And I definitely know what type I like. And I know what type of environment I would want to be in. Because cabarets are way, way more chill. And you're more, I just feel like you're more likely to find women of all diverse talent in there and women who will sit and have like an open conversation I don't know it's just it's so different but I also I go into it in an environment with a different mindset <laughs> you know like when I go into work over there uh I feel like my mindset while it's the same as most of the girls there it's also very different because I go to mainly put on a show and like allow a flow to come out on the stage rather than like try and get somebody's attention and if I do try and grab somebody's attention at all it's just from the flow I feel coming out of my body when I listen to music the same way that I paint my face the same way that I do tarot the same way that I can get into a video game uh you know flow as well yeah and um i don't know i'd also like
ASMR channel that I used to have for the ASMR followers I will have soft talking uh, cozy gamer streams you know what I mean where I'm like gonna be talking low so there's that for y'all talked about me doing a tarot stream I talked have I talked about me doing a tarot stream I think I have okay and how I'm incorporating it into all of my streams well so I'm obviously as y'all know I have the uh, tarot channel I've also got my tarot Facebook um, I don't know I feel like I could make content more curated to my old ASMR followers by like I don't know having soft-spoken reading tarot doing tarot doing it at night having like a cozy stream where it's soft talking low lighting which is what I saw a lot of in my old uh, channel it was super super cozy so I just like to curate more of that for people because I've always wanted to put off that type of energy anyways and as for the makeup I find myself <coughs> doing lots of tapping content like the brushes and playing with all of that but in relation to that with my other makeup channel that i had my cha-cha and makeup channel i'm going to curate content for that that is going to be like me getting ready for a tarot stream like today and having something to talk about which is something that i like to have more followers for and entertain more people for that and then um Obviously, as you know, I get ready sometimes for competitions, for nights at the club, for, I don't know, any content I'm going to make for followers on my stream, since I'm going to have pole dancing streams soon. Uh, now to talk about, finally, to talk about this tarot stream that will now continue from So, my intent with my tarot readings are only to curate conditions of health, wealth, and abundance. For any future viewers, those that allow me or join my live readings on Twitch every Sunday know at the beginning I will read for myself, uh, for you, and for the same for myself. So that way I can show you the courtesy of opening up my energy to you as you open your energy up to me. So for this reading, I pulled out 12 cards, as you can see. This card right here, we, we go all the way from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I shuffled and got 6 cards and got 12 cards here. Alrighty, so first month out of the year, 4 of Cups. 6 of Cups, I'm sorry. We see a loss of innocence here. Loss of innocence. Well, if this is the beginning of the year for you, I can see how that would come into play. Six of Cups comes being emptied out, loss of innocence. If this card were right side up, it would look like it's uh, Cups at a dinner table with family. Um, as you can see from the plate in the background, but it's upside down. So we see a longing this first month of the year for that childlike nostalgia, for that childlike innocence, for that comfort, for that um, safe energy, that playful energy, if we will. We need to curate that again. Let's keep going on to the next month. That's for the month of January. Alrighty, Queen of Swords. This is a woman who sticks to her word entirely. This is a woman who um, does not allow anybody to, like, in the, in the home, this is somebody who in the home their word is taken, like, their word is bond, that what they say goes. If you see, it's like a tribal woman holding a sword with um, houses in the background, right? So she, there is order being kept here with the word of the mother energy here. So let's be mindful of that for the coming year. 
Ah, Four of Cups. We're back with Four of Cups energy on the th on the third month out of the year. Gifts, a surprise love will be coming into your life. A love that will make you feel f feel fulfilled, but will also make you go, where have I not been putting this energy to into most of my life? There will be a love coming, a new gift coming into your life. While it is supposed to give you some type of emotional fulfillment, you realize that only when this cup is here, when you have this energy in your life, are you happy. So where are you missing it out of in the other areas of your life? So as you see, there are these three cups in front of you that are empty with this card. Uh, the card, the cup at the cup of the heart, uh, at the cup is coming from on high. It's coming on to you while you're meditating in your energy. So while there is a cup that you have filled coming to you, see where you can share that energy in other areas of your life. Two of Swords. All right. All right. So the, by the fourth month of the year for you, come your birthday you will find yourself mentally you'll be exchanging words with somebody you will um, probably learn of an idea from somebody that you're close with and it is going to make you disagree with them you're going to find yourself in a lot of disagreements about ideas about beliefs that are held or or it could be words ex yeah no just like that disagreement words exchange with people so i would be careful um projecting yourself that much uh not like getting triggered i would you know that is the only advice that i would recommend to you honestly all righty three of swords come the fifth month of the year for you three of swords we got um Alrighty, so for the fifth month of the year for you, friend, I see, I do see a heartache, but that is very obvious from the picture, right? Three of, yeah, <laughs> okay, alrighty. Uh, I see heartbreak here, I see a loss here, I might even see um, feelings of depression coming from said loss. I do say heartbreak, but it is with the air sign, alright? So, let's be mindful of if this heartbreak is real, or if it's only from, um, you know, you disagreeing with people, and you feeling like you are at an impasse from words being said just from the month before. So let's be mindful here if there is real harm that has been done to you at all, or if it's just mentally, if it's maybe more towards yourself, if maybe you find yourself finding heartbreak from somebody not coming through with their promise or words having been said to you, like I said, the month before. So now we're halfway through the year for you, friend. All right, we're halfway through the year for you okay we're ending our at the six year at the six month point with four of swords there is a need for rest here i will tell you that with this card being pulled up however it's pulled upside down so we need to be mindful if we are allowing ourselves to rest or if or for if what this card is telling me i mean just a couple months before here you seem to be really in a mental battle you seem to be really triggered by communication being thrown your way is what i'm seeing is that weighing down this coming month six months in it is a good question to keep for yourself in the coming months all right there we go cha cha there we go okay so we are seven months in also i did it backwards we're seven months in and we find ourselves okay so the cups card is back what is the card what does that cup tell us all right you're sitting in between a pool let's just say you're sitting at the edge of the pool you're sitting uh at the start of a road and on both sides of the road you have all this emotional energy that you have things that you're going to need to decide 
of which you need to put your energy into, okay? It's either you're going to put energy into this cup right here, but are you also going to have enough energy to give over here? All right, now that I'm moving on to this next phase of life, am I going to put energy here or there? So you're going to need to be mindful of if, if you like doing so many things, if you have love to give, where are you putting that loving energy to on your way towards your goal and how that's going to benefit you? Um, while I do see this upside down, I think it's something that you definitely need to meditate on way more a friend okay alrighty now don't be scared friend don't be scared friend okay don't be scared of this card and I'm gonna tell you why you shouldn't be scared of this card it's very simple all it means is rebirth all in well I mean chapters ending new stories beginning like if there is a death here i think that you know i don't believe that it will be physical i see here that there will be probably a growth of yourself um with all these changes that will be hopefully implemented into this new year of your life while alive uh yeah these are things that um you can focus on of your self and help you grow as well oh yes okay i knew it i knew it all right yeah i pulled these cards but i i pulled them i recorded me pulling them and then i put them back <laughs> not put them back but you know what i mean i i do that so ace of wands for your ninth month out of the year Ace of Wands is the card here, and this is a card of new of new passion, of new energy coming into your life, a new fire ignited. This is the card of this new creative project that is going to stir in your soul, this new passion that's going to stir in your soul, and you're going to want to let it out. Remember to act on it though, because an idea without action is just a dream. Tenth month of the year, we got the Empress. We have, we have leaning into the mother energy. We we see leaning into the most goddess-like energy of ourself this coming month from this newfound passion and action we are going to be implementing of our life of this fire. And then what do we see? on the last month here we see the queen of pentacles with the queen of pentacles what is that that is the queen of the domestic environment this is a woman who um takes charge takes care of the finances in the home and makes sure of it this is the woman who is managing the whole home life around her she is in charge and in large and she is very much in her goddess-like energy from this new fire and passionate energy that she has curated herself within herself in the past few months from letting go of old uh, emotional beliefs and understanding why we are getting triggered at um we find ourselves getting emotionally triggered from swords being thrown our way Finally, the last month, what does the last month of the year look like for you, friend? Thank you for all the new follows, everybody. Hello, hello, and welcome. Oh, Knight of Pentacles is what I see in the last month. Okay, we just had some great cards, so why are we coming up to this card upside down? Well, let's talk about it. Knight of Pentacles. A reliable person with patience and hard work. Ooh, and I see this upside down at the end of the year, okay? So let's remember, all right? This is the card at the end of the year. This is the card, and you just had... It, it seems a little bit contradictory, doesn't it? Because you just had these really great cards come up right before. You have Queen of Pentacles, a queen of 
you know, your domestic environment, your queen of the money coming into your life. You are bringing in the money in the life, so you are all freaking relaxed, honey. You don't need anybody to lean on. Maybe that's the issue with Knight of Pentacles here. I think that is the issue here, okay? So rather you being... Okay, I'm going to tell you this, honey, and I mean this with all the love in the world. All right, because I might have sounded like a hypocrite earlier. But you know what? Just because you are allowing all these streams of income to come in and you're not allowing uh, mental barriers to get in the way of old limiting beliefs, you are not being triggered or taken in control of by your emotions anymore, by the cups, by the water energy. Now that we are, are allowing the fire in our life with the want energy, this new passion for something, this new passion for a creative project, we step into our Empress energy, right? We are the queen of the money we are bringing in. That doesn't mean we can't allow another stream of income to be coming in, which could possibly be with the love of another person. Ergo, if somebody comes into your life and wants to help you truly, fully relax into your queen-like energy, into your empress energy, you know, there's a fella that maybe comes in that wants to, like, take care of you. I think it's very... It would help to be open to that energy, which is what I see this card being as. Rather than some horrible person coming into your life and taking advantage of you, which is what I do not get out of this card at all, I see that you should be allowing more of this nightlike energy into your life because I do see it as a stagnation rather than like a stoppage, you know, blockage altogether. Like it's just, you just need to turn your heart open to, I guess, that love that will come into your life. And then more money will definitely come into your life, you know? But be mindful too, I guess. This card is a double-edged sword, if you will. We need to be mindful of somebody wanting to come in and help take care of us financially. But we also need to be like, yo, you want to come into my life and take care of me financially? You need to show me that you're putting a work, not just for your work, but also in us too. So just because you're reliable in money doesn't mean you can't be reliable in the physical realm of our energy and everything like that. And remember, I am a person living my reality as separately as you are. Yeah. And now we are going to get the last four cards of this reading right here. And these cards will represent earth, wind, water, and fire. And we're going to see where your energies are with that going into the year. So, your earth energy... What I was saying. Okay, so I see for my friend the energy going with your environment, with earth. It seems that you are on a road to travel somewhere very soon. Your wind energy... Yeah, with your wind energy, the energy that has to do with your thought process, I see you are a person who is relying way, way, way too much on financial gain at the moment or stressing about financial gain. You are stressing about how much money you have coming in and um, where you're going to be splurging it next. Um, that is what I see for your wind energy, with the energy of the swords going on in your head. Water energy. Okay, water energy has to do with your emotions right and we see king of pentacles i see your heart being taken too much i see your energy your emotional energy being put too much into um maybe looking for somebody to take care of you or feeling like your emotions are taken over by stressors of having to take care of yourself financially so six of swords is out here on the fire energy card which is this card right here that card six of swords really that's what it means two four seven. oh that's seven of swords okay alrighty. so the seven of swords has to do with um betrayal but it seems to be coming more inward okay now remember, this is about um, air energy here. This has to do with swords. So, what was I saying? So the final card, Seven of Swords, has to do with the betrayal, but it seems to be a betrayal more inwards, coming from 
your um, mental energy, you're being harmful to yourself, which is what is hindering all this passion in your life. You know what I mean? All this passion, this new drive for creative energy to create more streams of income. So I see this first card here, your earth energy. I do see you traveling uh, in your in the energy of air. I do see that what holds you back a lot is fear of a lack of luxury and self-sufficiency. In the card of uh, water here, I see a king of pentacles dominating that energy. Um, and then in the, in the energy of fire right here, where seven of swords is, I see what is hindering back your passions and your urge to create is uh, self-imposed mental restrictions on yourself, friend. And um, all I want for you is growth, which is why I made for you this video today, and I am streaming it with the entire, uh, <laughs> with the entire Twitch chat today. Um, thank you everybody for watching this. This will be posted up to my YouTube, and I will be performing readings over at my Facebook page, Follow Cha Cha and Tarot. Uh, yeah, if you like the way this stream is set up today, um guess what? I have an affiliate ship with Streamlabs. So if you don't want to tip and donate the stream today, but you are a future streamer and you want to also make your own stream and you want to make it super professional and you also want to make it super easy to cross stream, have seamless work across all your platforms, I highly recommend Streamlabs Ultra today. So yeah. Anyways, so I will be doing tarot readings over on my facebook page cha cha and tarot and for my friend whose tarot reading this was for i hope you have an amazing rest of your year have a happy birthday it was it already passed but oh well um you know better late than never i always say um yeah, and for any of my friends and family that are close to me, I will definitely be doing more tarot readings, and I will be doing them for friends and family for free, and, well, that's because they're, they're practice, and you know, yeah. But, uh, if ever you want your own personal reading, go ahead and follow me over at Cha Cha and Tarot, over on Facebook. And I hoped y'all enjoyed this little tarot stream I had. I'm going to be taking a short break, but I will definitely be back soon for some uh, video game streaming later. I need a tarot reading. <laughs> I like the way you say it. I need a tarot reading. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why. Yeah, in between all these jobs that I was just talking about that I kept earlier, I also found myself apprenticing with um, light workers and getting back in touch with my roots. And Stephanie here was one of the first people that allowed me to work on her for the first time ever. And I've also done tarot readings for her in real life. So yeah, Stephanie is a near and dear friend to me. And I am so happy she gets to be here with all of my new friends, with all of y'all today. That being said, I am going to now sign off to my friend whose video I did this for. I hope you hold up. To my friend who to, oh. uh, who I did this video for, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a lot out of it. Don't hesitate to reach out to me if ever you want to continue having a discussion about it. And I will be keeping in touch with you throughout the year to see how this went for you. And um, there will be more content coming for those of y'all that were here earlier from my Get Ready With Me uh <laughs> expect more get ready with me where you'll be seeing me put on more makeup um expect a really fun pole dancing stream to be coming sometime this week and expect more video game stuff more cozy video game stuff expect more asmr content and i love you everybody and i'm so happy you all got to be here and spend this time this study session with me I'm about to hit 40 minutes in with this video, so I better cut it soon. I also got to go eat and spend some time with my honey bun, but I will be back soon, and I hope you all are following me on all my platforms. I hope you are all keeping, you know, make sure you're following me so you never miss a chance whenever I go live. Um, if there's too many links, I will have a link tree up and edited and updated a link tree up soon. 
and um i can't wait to talk to you soon stephanie and i hope to see you all back here soon i love you all share some love spread some kindness uh, be most importantly be kind to yourself